Good morning. Today we look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 39. This is our assigned reading for the morning. Um, and chapter, verse 19 starts with that word, therefore. You know, so we think back what, what Jesus was saying. Oh, he said, where there is forgiveness of sins, there's no longer any offering for sin. So therefore, we come to God in confidence, knowing that we have this safe place. You know, you use the word sanctuary in my Bible. And, you know, the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. I mean, the, the sanctuary, you know, is a, we have wildlife sanctuaries. It's a place where the wildlife, you know, the birds and the deer and all the animals are are free from the threat of, of human uh, intruders coming in that way. It's a resting place. It's a, a safe place. And the, the sanctuary in our churches is the room in which we gather to worship God, a place of, of safety, a place of encouragement, a place of, he hopefully, of healing. Um, but we enter this sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. So we come to God in this, this place of safety and security, you know, through the blood of Christ, knowing that our sins are forgiven. And... And then, starting in verse 22, there's kind of three, um, I don't know, responsibilities or, or acts of, of Christians, uh, kind of, you know, privileges, duties, I mean, things that, that because of Jesus' sacrifice, because we can approach God with confidence, we should first, I mean, it is, first we approach God with the true heart in full confidence that, you know, what he says is true. You know, approaching with full confidence that our sins will be forgiven, that we are welcome in his presence. And he says, you know, with our hearts sprinkled clean with the, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So we come to God confidently with our needs and our wants and our request for our sins to be forgiven. And then the second thing, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is faithful. So we hang on to that truth. We don't, we don't wonder about it. We don't worry. We don't let it go for sure. You know, we, we trust in God's, in God's word of grace and forgiveness. So we, we hold fast to that confession. We, you know, we, I mean, it's just, you, you don't ever have to worry about it because God is faithful. And then the, the last thing he says, let us not consider how to provoke one another in love and good deeds and not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. But so I, he was used that word provoke in there. And usually, I mean, when I hear that word provoke, you know, it's, you know, you provoke someone, uh, you know, but this is you provoke them to more faith. You provoke them to you encourage them. You know, and, and in so many ways, I would much, and some versions of the Bible may use a different word than provoke. I mean, there are many different translations, so yours may not have that word provoke in there, but, but let us consider how to encourage, I'm going to use, one another to love and good deeds, you know, and so we encourage each other in our faith, and, and we do that partly by meeting together, you know, gathering for worship, and that's, you know, it's it's one of the one of the things that we often maybe gloss over is the importance of our attendance at worship. You know, it it definitely does us good to go to worship, but it also is encouraging for the others to see you know a, a community that is gathered together, and through that community we are all encouraged, and that's you know it's through the community of of gathering for Sunday school and for worship that we learn about God. You know, it, it's so much better to do it that way. And so we, in, 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 in here, it says, you know, we, you know, we don't neglect to meet together. That means we join together for worship and we encourage one another. You know, it says all the more as we see the day. And in my book, the, the word day is uh, capitalized, the day approaching. I mean, this is the return of the Lord. I mean, but... You know, and as I as I commented on Sunday, it, it's hard to live in that tension of the, the day of the Lord, the return of the Lord. I mean, we, you know, we're we're two thousand years past that, and so we don't consciously, most of us, think about 
that every day. And then he goes on, if we willingly persist in sin after having received this knowledge of forgiveness, you know, we are subject then to to God's judgment and to God's wrath. And and he talks about, you know, violating the laws of, of Moses. Well, we all violate those laws of Moses. And, you know, he says, how much worse do you think the punishment will be for those who have spurned the Son of God, profaned the blood and the covenant by which they were sanctified? You know, if we ignore God, if we say there is no God, if we say that, you know, Jesus was, yeah, a good man, you know, but, you know, we... We hang on to that faith and that trust that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And it is through that that we, that we, we simply trust that, that our sins are forgiven. We don't have to worry about being condemned to that eternal place of separation from God. And then we have some quotes. For we know who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Well, that was God that said that. And then again, the Lord will judge his people. Well, yeah, and, and God will judge. And God knows what's in our hearts. God knows what's in our minds. God knows whether we believe in Jesus or not, you know. And he says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And it is. I mean, you think about, you know, coming to God. I mean, it is so wonderful that he is a gracious, loving, and merciful God so that we can come to him in that confidence, you know, when, I mean, we've all got sins to confess. There's no question about it. But we can come to him not having to worry about the wrath or his wrath or his punishment, but we come with that expressed belief in love, grace, and forgiveness. You know, and it is, it is such a blessing to be able to do that, to, you know, not have to worry about what's going to happen when we come to God. Well, we know what's going to happen when we come to God through Jesus Christ. You know, we're, we're going to be forgiven and we're going to be welcomed into his presence. Verse 35, he says, do not abandon the confidence of yours. It brings a great reward. So imagine, again, don't abandon your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Hang on to that. He says, you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what is promised. I mean, and the endurance here, I mean, it is just... Uh, the continuing faith, it is, you know, the, it's not to endure hardships, but it's it's to continue the course. And it's, I, I, you know, some ways I think about it, you know, the, they just ran the, with the New York Marathon not so many days ago, I think. But, you know, you think about the, the what those people endure to run that race. I mean, and, and our daughter runs half marathons, and I mean, 13 miles, or whatever it is, yeah, yeah, I, I just, I can't imagine the endurance that it takes, the, the will that it takes, the, the stamina, yeah, and this is what he's talking about here, it's that will to go on, it's that will to continue to believe in Jesus, and it's to, to continue pressing forward to the goal, as Paul writes in another spot, you know, we, we, we continue in, we continue this Life on earth in confidence of God's love and of God's grace. The last thing in in chapter 10 here, verse 39, um, I'm not going to read the whole verse. I'm just going to read what I have underlined. We are among those who have faith and so are saved. You know, there's, you know, we're not among those who shrink back and are lost, but we are among those who have faith in our saved. So what I, I have underlined in my Bible, all of that is we are among those who have faith and so are saved. And that's, that's where we want to be, right? We want to be among those who have faith and through faith, we are saved by God's grace.